Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to be looking at the new Sample Alchemy plugin found in Logic 10.8 and above. This plugin allows us to do some really cool sample manipulation and lets us come up with some real interesting sounds. So let's dive in. So I'm just starting with an empty software instrument track. And to load Sample Alchemy, we'll simply go down here uh, under Instrument here. Click on that. We'll go down and find Sample Alchemy. Click that. And that loads in Sample Alchemy. Now we have a few different options to get started here. The first thing is there's a whole bunch of presets that we can check out. So to look at those, you just go up here where it says default preset. Click on that. And here you can see all the list of different presets we have. So for example, if we want to try, uh, let's try the classic strings pad. So you'll notice that loads in a sample here. And if I play a chord, it sounds like that. Uh, if I just hold down one individual note, it'll sound like so. So each preset is going to load in a different sample. Uh, you can scroll through different presets just by the little arrows here. Now we're on this divine interference. So the presets are a good way just to dive in and get a sound right away. Now I'm just going to go back to the default, which clears everything and we no longer have any audio sample loaded in. So if I press my keyboard, we're not going to hear any sound. So this is where you can actually load in your own sample and we can get samples from a number of different places. Uh, for one, we can look at the Apple Loops library so for that, you just go up here in this corner with this little loop here or press the letter O on your keyboard. And that opens up all these different loops that we can sort by instrument, for example. So let's say maybe we want an organ. Let's say we like that sound. You can simply just click and drag that right in here and that loads in that sample that I can then play with my keyboard. You can also drag in any audio file that you might have on your computer as well. For example, if I've got this sample right here, I can simply drag and drop that and that'll get loaded in right in here. And just an, another quick shortcut that you can actually do, I can take that same sample and simply drag it over here. And here you'll see different options to load it directly into Sample Alchemy. So if I select Sample Alchemy, then it'll load in a new track with that sample loaded directly into Sample Alchemy. I'm just gonna close this and delete this. And let's open up our original one. <laughs> So we have that sample loaded in. I'm gonna close uh, the loop browser as well. So the first thing I'll talk about is the different play modes that we have. So first of all, classic mode. This is similar to our classic samplers. So it's just gonna play the sample from start to finish. So if I hold down a note here, you can see in here that it indeed just played the sample from start to finish. Now loop, uh, as you might have guessed, is just gonna loop the sample from starting point and end point. And we can adjust where those points take place. So if I want it just a short loop, I can click and drag this. 
or if I want a longer loop, I can extend it like so. Next, we have scrub. Now, scrub is just going to give a loop for one very short period of time. So I can click on the little A here, and that's just going to audition what the sound sounds like. And bow, so this you can think similarly to as a violin player playing with the bow across the string. So bowing back and forth, for example. So that sounds like this. And I can change the rate of the bow as well down here where it says bow rate. So I can make that faster if I'd like. Or, of course, slower. And the last one is ARP for arpeggio. So if I hold on a chord, you'll hear it arpeggiating through the notes. And I can change the ARP rate to make that go faster as well. So those are the five different modes that we have in Sample Alchemy. Now where things start to get a little bit more interesting is when we start adding some more sources into here. So, so far we've just had the one source labeled A, but we've also got B, C, and D that we can add in, which gives us four different sources. So basically we're gonna be triggering four different places in this one sample that we have. So let me just start with two for now. And we can click and move these to wherever we want on the sample. So if I click it, you'll hear it. I'll kind of be able to audition and find a sound that I like. Let's add a third one. And now let's add the D in. And now if I hold down a chord, that sounds quite a bit more interesting than it did originally just with the one source. Now let's see what the same thing sounds like with the bow now. And one thing to mention about the sources is that you'll get four sources for all of these except for the loop. If you go to loop, you're limited to just the two sources. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go back to bow. And now that we've got our sources selected, let's move down here and look at the different parameters that we can change. So I demonstrated the bow rate earlier, and this is the one parameter that's gonna change depending on what mode we're on. So for scrub mode, you'll see it changes to scrub jitter, then loop speed, playback speed, and ARP rate. So this first parameter is gonna change depending on what mode you're in. Now for each of these knobs, we can either change it globally. So if we select all the sources, A, B, C, D, for example, now if I hold down a chord and change the panning, you'll hear everything pan from left to right. And same thing goes for the tuning. So we've got chorus tune, which we can move up and down in semitones or a fine tune. Now the cool thing is we can actually change these all individually. So I can select just source A and let's say I can have source A panned all the way to the left, D, all the way to the right, and we'll keep B and C in the middle, and that's gonna give us a wide, cool sound. Now you can see over here, we're clipping a little bit. So what we can do is go up here to these three little dots to global, and we can just bring down the overall volume a little bit. and that it just adjusts the volume of the sample. Now, another thing we can do to kind of beef this up a little bit is we can change the tuning of some of these. So for example, 
Uh, let's leave A where it is. Uh, D, why don't we bring that one down an octave, so minus 12 semitones. B, let's move that up an octave, plus 12 semitones. And C, we'll leave that. And the tune fine, we can mess around with a little bit. So why don't we just slightly detune B and C from each other? Just a few cents each. And that'll kind of give us a bit of a chorusy sound. Now, if you want to change the volume and balance of each of these, you can do that up here in the mixer. So for example, so right now we've just muted A and we can bring up the rest and kind of make a balance mix for that, for the sound. We'll go ahead and close the mixer now. Now over here in this section, this is where we have the different synthesis modes. So by default, it's set to granular, and we also have additive and spectral. And each of these different synthesis modes have their own parameters that you can change as well. And additionally, they'll also have their own spectral effects. Now once again, depending on your selection here, so let's say we have select all. So right now, if I make a change, you'll get to hear that applied to all the different sources. Just like these parameters here, we can change them individually as well. So if we select just source A, we can change that to granular. We can change D to additive. We can leave B on spectral and C. We can change that back to granular. See how that sounds. And of course, we can mess with the different synthesis parameters for each of these modes as well. Now, we've also got a filter section over here that is currently off. So again, that can apply to the individual sources or we can set it globally, which it currently is using this global button. So we can turn that on and off. So let's say we wanna use the filter cutoff, turn that on like so. Right now it's set to low pass, which means it's gonna let the low frequencies pass through, but it's gonna cut all the high frequencies. So that sounds like this. And we can adjust the resonance as well. And if we want to adjust that individually for each source, then we would just turn off the global and select the source that you want to adjust. So you'll see every time I click on a different source, it'll have a different setting. And currently it's off, so I'll just turn that on. And now we have a different cutoff value for each of these sources. Now we can also adjust the overall attack, decay, sustain, and release of the sample. So if you want a slower attack, which will give us kind of a smoother, more kind of a pad sound, we can increase that. So you get kind of more of that fade in. Or if you're on the art mode, then you're likely gonna want a nice quick attack. Now, 
last thing I'll show is our options up here. So first we have trim, and this allows us just to trim up the sample. So if you have a very long sample or loop and you just wanna use one section of it, well, this is where you can trim that. And we also have a few snap features here, so we can snap it to different transients that are found within the sample. And then over here for motion, this is where you can actually record in your own motion for each source. So for example, if I wanna create my own custom motion for let's say the D source, I'll just hit record and then I'll start moving it around with the mouse just by clicking and dragging. And then I can adjust the duration of that motion that I just recorded over here to let's say I want it to be four beats and then I want it to end at beat five. So now if I go back to the play mode, you'll see the outline of D moving around based on the motion that I recorded. So that allows you to record in your own motions right into Sample Alchemy. So I hope that helps give you an overview of the Sample Alchemy plugin and shows you some cool ways that you can come up with some creative sounds, either using your own sounds or by manipulating some other sounds found in either the Apple Loops library or anywhere else that you might find some sounds to experiment with. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my Ultimate Logic Pro Starter Pack. This includes my Logic Pro Hotkey Cheat Sheet, my audio recording checklist, my mixing guide, my gear guide, and my Logic Pro template files. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.